What's going on guys? I'm the wizard and in this video we're going to be talking about some recent news regarding the Xbox One and kind of taking a look at where the next gen or I guess now current gen consoles stand currently. Um, both consoles, both new systems, the PS4 and the Xbox One came out uh, late 2013 so it's been uh, what has it been? Like, uh, seven or six months or so, I think like six months. We'll call it six, um, since at least the Xbox One came out. I think the PS4 was a few weeks before it. Uh, and initially, they had great success off the bat. Lots of people buying them, hard to find. Um, but then people started having problems. Now, I can only speak on the Xbox One, because uh, that's the only console I have at the moment. And I, w I will agree, it has been a little disappointing, or actually greatly disappointing, with some of the features that you would think should be standard and just weren't there, and or still not there. It's amazing that six months down the road there are still features that were available on the 360, and that worked perfectly for almost, what was it, like five more plus years, however long it was the 360 was around. Uh, things were great over there. Xbox Live, the party system, was rock solid, the best in the game. But but they just took a step backwards. I don't know what happened. They were getting too far ahead of themselves. They took two steps forward, one step back. The party system on the Xbox One is trash. But that's not really what this video is going to be about. Um, just overall, the Xbox One, it's a good machine. It has great potential. But I think they missed the mark on too many places. Uh, for one, developers seem to be having the hardest of time trying to get games to ideal 1080p, 60 frames a second. That's what a next-gen machine should be able to do. But developers can't hit that, so they're like, oh, maybe they'll hit 1080 at 30. You know, that's not too bad. That's pretty good. But no, they can't even hit that. Most developers for the Xbox One are hitting 720 to 900p. And they're like, that's as much as we can do with what we have. Uh, sorry about that, you're gonna have to deal with it. Games still look great, don't get me wrong, but I am just bamboozled, I am confused out of my mind, is why a next-gen machine that costs $500 cannot reach 1080p at 60 frames in the year 2013. I mean, come on, Xbox, Microsoft, they need to step it up, come to the plate either with a revamped Xbox One, which I would hate to have to buy, um, or some sort of program where users can get a more efficient machine and developers can truly start unleashing the power of the next generation of games. Uh, now one last thing, I did mention the Xbox, it was $500. Well, not anymore. You can get to the Xbox One without a Kinect for $399. That's $400. It brings the price down to that of the PlayStation 4. Uh, just like the PS4 it does not come with the Kinect and the PS4 does not come with the PlayStation I. So, I don't know if that will really impact your decision buying it because the machine itself is still the same and it is still rather almost like a beta console. So I'm going to throw the question to you guys. What do you think about the current state of the Xbox One and whether or not the reduced price with the connectless Xbox One will impact your purchase decision if you haven't picked one up already? As always, make sure you drop a like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, wizard out.